what is happening in the U.S. Uh, higher education and universities is extremely worrying because it sort of uh, shows how free speech and other liberal values that uh, uh, many Western countries, especially the U.S. espouses, uh, are, are not only uh, under immense stress. Recently, the president of Harvard University was made to resign and she was accused of plagiarism, but it was actually uh, a kind of an excuse because there was a whole right wing uh, uh, assault and propaganda uh, wanting her to uh, leave this uh, particular position. And ultimately, uh, she had uh, to leave. November, Columbia University suspended two student groups that organized multiple demonstrations in response to the Israel-Hamas war. Two days after the suspension, 400 students gathered to criticize both Israel-Hamas war and Colombia's decision to disavow the student organizations. Brandeis University revoked official support for the organization on November 8. Hello and welcome back to New Wave Global. And I have been meaning to talk about a very important uh, uh, you know, uh, subject and issue that uh, unfortunately has, uh, you know, kind of uh, emerged and some would say exposed uh, during the recent, uh, you know, Israeli uh, assault on Gaza, you know, following the uh, brutal attack by Hamas in October last year. And what is happening in the U.S. Uh, higher education and universities is extremely worrying because it sort of uh, shows how free speech and other liberal values that uh, uh, many Western countries, especially the U.S. espouses, uh, are, are not only uh, under immense stress, but in a way... Uh, their selective application uh, is now a matter of concern for everyone who believes in uh, freedom of speech, in the democratic ideals of uh, calling out uh, wrong policies, brutalities, excesses. So, uh, you know, as you know, recently the president of Harvard University was made to resign and she was accused of plagiarism, but it was actually uh, a kind of an excuse because there was a whole right wing uh, uh, assault and propaganda uh, wanting her to uh, leave this uh, particular position. And ultimately, uh, she had uh, to leave uh, her her position. Earlier, the, the, the president of uh, uh, UPenn, University of Pennsylvania, which is an Ivy League university, uh, also resigned because... Uh, there were concerns about anti-Semitism and hate speech on campus, while actually, with U.S. support, Israel was bombing civilians in Gaza. So it is really ironic. I mean, the Harvard president, Claudine Gay, issued her resignation um, based on six counts of plagiarism. Uh, and uh, basically, her work was... Uh, uh, analyzed and criticized, uh, uh, and uh, that was the case, as I mentioned, uh, made against her. Uh, the famous uh, uh, magazine uh, Nation uh, points out that the campaign behind Gay's departure had little to do with her scholarly transgressions, but was a raw ideological pooch by members of uh, GOP think tanks, Christopher Rufo, a member of conservative think tank, uh, the Manhattan Institute, detailed the plan in a tweet in late December. I quote, we launched the Claudine Gay plagiarism story from the right. The next step is to smuggle it into the media apparatus of the left, legitimizing the narrative to center left actors who have the power to topple her, then squeeze, unquote. Gay's resignation uh, came, as I mentioned earlier, after two other universities uh, presidents this year, Elizabeth Magill stepped down as the president of the University of Pennsylvania under a month before Gay, and similarly after apologizing for a widely con uh, for widely con uh, con uh, uh, condemned comments on free speech, genocide, and Israel-Hamas war. Uh, but let's go back a bit earlier. So if we go back in November, 
Columbia University suspended two student groups that organized multiple demonstrations in response to the Israel-Hamas war. The university denied funding and official recognition of the group's Jewish Voice for Peace and Students for Justice in Palestine, SJP, after a joint walkout and peaceful protest art installation, which Columbia's chair of the Special Committee on Campus Saf Safety said included unspecified threatening rhetoric and intimidation. This was the third event that JVP and SJP organized following Hamas's attack in October on Israeli civilians. Uh, just as with the previous two events, Columbia officials restricted um, area access to Columbia ID holders in advance, a move one student described as a tactic, in my opinion, to scare people from organizing and keeping things silent. The university's suspension drew ire from students and faculty who stressed the need for free speech. A statement from Jewish Voice for Peace said, instead of supporting students' right to speak and to mobilize on campus, Columbia has chosen to prioritize uh, suppressing speech on Israel and organizing to end the ongoing genocide and worsening humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Two days after the suspension, 400 students gathered to criticize both Israel Hamas war and Colombia's decision to disavow the student organizations. And then a day later, 200 faculty members staged a walkout to offer support for student groups, reading statements as police hel helicopters bared down. Classics professor Joseph Howley spoke against the university deeming students pro-Palestine uh, speech threatening and Barnard College history professor, uh, uh, I've forgotten the name now, demanded of Columbia, where is your moral courage? Columbia was neither the first nor the only higher education institution to ban students for justice in Palestine from its campus. Brandeis University revoked official support for the organization on November 8, two days before Columbia. Uh, and then... Uh, critical students and university officials on campuses where chapters of the national organization reside have expressed concern that if it grows, it might uh, turn into a hateful increase in anti-Semitism. Semitism. Um, suspensions of S SJP also followed at George Washington University and the State University's system of Florida, which accused the organization of supporting Hamas. Now imagine. The local chapter SJP, alongside the American Civil Liberties Union and, Palis uh, and Palestine Legal, filed a federal lawsuit against Governor DeSantis and other Florida officials, arguing they have no basis for, uh, that they gave no basis for, uh, for the material support for terrorism allegations. It's a very serious allegation. And imagine, uh, you know, accusing young students of that is both uh, stressful and totally unfair. Um, Harvard University uh, met wide-ranging criticism for too limited a response to rising tensions on its campus after Hamas's October 7 attack. A coalition of student Palestine support groups at Harvard drafted a letter condemning Israeli policy, a routine practice that usually garnered no notice. But the statement grew to receive national news coverage, leading to a doxing campaign by the conservative watchdog group, Accuracy in Media. The group arranged a billboard truck to arrive in Harvard Square to project the names and photographs of student leaders from the, uh, from the signing organizations under the heading Harvard's Leading Anti-Semites, directing onlookers to a URL that lists the names of student leaders and form to push Harvard to condemn these students. Some students attempted to distance themselves from the letter, while Harvard's leadership seemed to do little to protect community members concerned for Palestine or Israel, for that matter. Conditions at the university led to an investigation by the Office for Civil Rights of the U.S. Education Department. Let's go to other places in Queens, New York City. 400 students in Hillcrest High School stormed the halls in an aggressive protest, targeting a teacher who they learned had attended a pro-Israel rally. The teacher had to remain locked in her office for hours. Um, uh, similarly, According to a professor, uh, uh, Amarine Dadabhai, 
at uh, Harvey Mudd College in Claremont, California. A faculty member was arrested at Ponoma College by the, by the uh, uh, campus police for playing Palestinian music during a peaceful protest. This is crazy. Um, and the calls by other presidents, so for, for example, Ithaca College president uh, issued a statement on October 10 expressing horror at Hamas's terrorist attack. No follow-up message came regarding Israel's retaliation in Gaza, leaving some students to feel like essentially a footnote. The initial statement from Cornell's president met criticism, criticism for failing to identify Hamas's attack as, as one of terror. After and, and after a Cornell professor's speech at a rally supporting Palestine drew national attention for sentiments critics saw as, a glo as, as glorifying violence, uh, the president of Cornell University issued a far stronger le letter insisting any members of our community who have, who have made such statements do not speak for Cornell. A letter from Cornell faculty later acknowledged the president for a November initiative to address anti-Semitism, but insisted that the university must squash har harassment and doxing plaguing the school and ensure equal freedom of expression. At the City University of New York, CUNY, uh, and its Hunter College, a brief statement condemned Hamas's terrorist attack with a large protest of Hunter students gathering in New York City days late, later to protest the Israel-Hamas war and the U.S. response. A month later, the college prevented a screening, uh, uh, pre pre prevented the screening of a film which is sort of cr critical of Israel, causing backlash from students and faculty who said that the administration was undermining academic freedom. According to attorney and co-founder of Foundation for Individual Rights, um, uh, an expression, Harvey Silvergate, I quote, universities should have no political po positions whatsoever. It is not their job to keep the peace by shutting up one side. It is their job to keep the peace and allow a forum for free expression. Silvergate further said of Harvard, the job of a university is to provide a safe environment where students can speak and students can listen. This is unfortunately an ongoing issue. And as an instructor myself, as somebody who uh, teaches young students, I feel terribly, terribly uh, awful about it, the way universities have been muzzling free speech, not encouraging an environment of um, uh, intellectual in engagement, of knowing about history and understanding the world through the prism of immense scholarship that exists. Instead, there has been this complete uh, uh, effort to tow the official line. And, if, and I'm glad that young people are resisting that. Some faculty members are resisting that. Organizations are protesting. But where is the free speech and, and where have the liberal values gone from the US ac academia? And that is a major, major worry. And I shall talk about it later in a subsequent video. It is enough for today and take care of yourselves. See you later.